Fred Plykin is out front live in Kyiv. And Fred, what is the latest on the ground there tonight? Hi there, Aaron. Well, it was so interesting to see those depleted missile supplies, that graphic that you just showed, because one of the things that we're seeing on the ground here is a lot fewer strikes by the Russians today here in Kiev and in other places as well. But of course, at the same time on the front line, the war is still in full swing. Now you have the Russians gaining some ground in some places in the east, but the Ukrainians making a lot of headway in the south, in the area around Kherson. And that clearly has a lot of pro-Russian officials very worried. Here's what we're learning. Even as Russia has been bombarding Ukraine with missiles and drones this week, Ukrainian forces have been pushing Moscow's troops back in the south of the country, raising their flag in newly liberated areas like this village called Arkhangelsky. The boys worked for six, seven months on liberating Arkhangelsky. They are raising the flag of a free and united Ukraine. The Kherson region is one of the areas recently illegally annexed by Russia. But Ukraine's army is now advancing so much that Russian installed officials are asking for civilians to be evacuated to Russian territory. Because of this, the Kherson administration has decided to organize opportunities for Kherson families to travel to other regions of Russia for leisure and study. Kiev denounced the move, saying Russia is deporting people rather than saving them. Ukraine has vowed to take back all the territory Russia has seized. The country's president said at a celebration for Ukraine's Defenders Day on Friday. By defeating this enemy, we will respond to all enemies who encroached on Ukraine, on those who lived, who live, and who will live on our land. This will be a victory for all our people. But in the east, a different story. Civilians fleeing the Russian advance on the industrial town of Bakhmut. The charge being led by Wagner, the private military company headed by the man known as Putin's chef, Yevgeny Prigozhin. These photos showing Wagner troops on the ground in the areas surrounding Bakhmut. On social media, Prigozhin announced Thursday that Wagner forces have taken a small town on the outskirts of the city. The Wagner group has established complete control over Ivangrad, he said. I want to emphasize that there was not a single person from other units except the employees of Wagner group in Ivangrad. Wagner has long been known for brutal tactics. CNN has unearthed evidence of the group's mercenaries committing massacres on civilians in Libya, Sudan, Mozambique, and the Central African Republic. Recently, Wagner and Prigozhin have dropped their shadowy veil. Prigozhin himself seen recruiting convicts in prisons, admitting he owns Wagner, and even attending funerals of one of his fallen fighters. Wagner units have already been prominently involved in Russia's campaign in Ukraine. It seems they are now the spearhead of Vladimir Putin's invasion force. And you know, Aaron, you just saw that statement by Yevgeny Prigozhin emphasizing that it was only Wagner soldiers or Wagner troops who were near that town of Bakhmut. There are a lot of people who, are, who believe that right now Yevgeny Prigozhin of Wagner is trying to orchestrate a power grab in Moscow, that he's trying to help out, possibly oust the defense minister of Russia, as obviously Russia's campaign is mm. going very badly, and himself grab power among those under Vladimir Putin, Aaron. All right, thank you very much, Fred Plaikin. I want to go now to the former CIA director, John Brennan, author of the book Undaunted, My Fight Against America's Enemies at Home and Abroad. And director, let me just start with uh, Fred's reporting on the Wagner Group, uh, that you have this, this power play, he's saying, uh, with uh, the leader there trying to challenge Putin's defense ministry, maybe get rid of Shoigu and take over, and uh, described as the spearhead now of the, the Russian war effort. What do you read into that? Well, I think, Aaron, as was reported, the Russians have done so poorly on the battlefield that I think Putin is looking for some new options to be able to uh, push the Ukrainians back. And uh, tapping into the Wagner Group, which, as was noted, is a very brutal organization, paramilitary. They probably have eight to 10,000 or so paramilitary troops. Uh, and I do think that there is some jockeying among the various uh, senior leaders of, of Russia right now trying to uh, take uh, command and control. And because they have done so poorly. Just last weekend, uh, Putin um, appointed the, the butcher of Syria, uh, General uh, uh, Dvortnikov, 
uh, who really uh, engaged in some brutal tactics and massive uh, attacks and assaults uh, inside of Syria. So I do think as Putin's options are narrowing and as the Russian forces are doing so poorly on the battlefield, especially in Kherson, they've been there for about six months. And that's a major strategic objective. The fact that they weren't able to fortify it enough to be able to withstand a Ukrainian assault, I think, is really telling of just how incompetent they are. Well, I mean, it's also, I know you have had the chance to meet with many who, who know Putin and are close to Putin, but when you hear about a power grab and someone trying to get rid of his defense minister, I mean, it does raise bigger questions. From the people that, that you've met and seen operate around Putin, do you think that, whether it's because they want more action or less action, that there could be a real threat to Putin himself? Well, I think increasingly Putin is seeing this conflict as quite existential uh, to his political survival. I don't think there's any way that he will survive this if he isn't able to credibly claim victory in Ukraine. And the, the people around him, uh, the, the Gerasimov, uh, who's the head of the uh, general staff, Shoigu, the defense minister you mentioned, uh, Bortnikov, the head of the uh, FSB, the intelligence service, Patrushev, who's their security advisor. I mean, these are people, I think, that are very worried, but they know that they're also in the accountability bucket. And so it's a question of whether or not uh, somebody you know, may try to uh, make a move somehow against Putin, but he does have a monopoly on power. And so, uh, therefore, I, I think we, we, the next several weeks and, and a couple of months, I think, are going to be very dynamic and, and very, I think, telling of, of where this conflict is going to go. So I, I was talking about the, just the incredible dire straits, right? 86% of the Iskander missiles are gone, right? I mean, just of the conventional missiles. And obviously, you know, there, there's the nuclear elephant in the room. Uh, but the, the, we're also seeing the, the video that I showed of um, draft officers waiting in the lobby of an apartment building to grab men. And when these video, these recent recruits uh, end up out in the field, and there's some of them are ending up on the front lines incredibly quickly, we're hearing from some of them. Let me just play some of it. We've got this shit for training. F knows what kind of house we're at. Three armor-piercing cartridges. F we're in Svatov, you guys. What region? Luhansk region. We are mobilized. We don't have to be here at all. 11 days from when we were deployed. We left Moscow 11 days ago. How many times did you shoot already? Once. Three bullet cartridges. 11 days from draft to front line, uh, one training, three bullet cartridges. That's what they're saying in that video. There's a lot more where that came from. Does that shock you? No, I mean, Putin says that he has uh, deployed uh, 16,000 of these cons conscripts over the past uh, couple of weeks since the partial mobilization went into effect. It's my understanding that a lot of the Russians who go into the Ukraine, unfortunately, they're going to become cannon fodder. But the number of desertions really has increased. It's being very uh, much underreported. And that's why I do think he's opting for some of these other groups, uh, the Wagner Group and others, because I think that the lack of training, the lack of capability uh, of these uh, Russian uh, civilians who have been impressed into service, I think it just demonstrates just how desperate Putin is to try to claim some type of progress in the battlefield.